is going on guys today's project guide is back here again and today it is a dreary cold day in upstate new york we are going to be doing a little work on this dsm finally and it's long overdue we're going to come out here to the front end do a little uh little modification out on this side here we're going to come over and put our front mount intercooler system on we're going to take apart the front bumper. We're going to take everything off that we need to take off. We're going to fit this thing up and get it all installed so we can lose the crappy side mount that's getting so hot every time I drive this thing on the highway. You can just tell it's it's robbing it of power. The timing, you can watch the timing drop from the temp. I don't know. I think we're going to get rid of our fog light holes also because both of those lights are smoked. I'll probably replace them in the future at some point with something else, but for right now, I want to drive this thing around and see a nice shiny front mount intercooler sitting in there. And yes, this is uh, the one that I posted on Instagram. It's from EMUSA. It was not that expensive. I think they were like $300, and I ended up finding this one on a personal sale for something like 100 bucks. Guy had bought it for a project, ended up getting rid of the project, and had this sitting around. So, hell of a steal. So anyway, we're going to get this thing put up on some jacks, we're going to get this front bumper ripped off, and I'm going to hopefully hang this thing up there nice and square and show you guys how to do it while I'm at it. Okay guys, so we've got this thing popped open, we're going to jack it up here in a hot second. Uh, one of the things you're going to want to do first off is spray all of these little, I believe they're 10 mil bolts, these like to snap off and then you have to hit them with the easy outs. Uh, and this, we're going to end up taking out those bolts. we got to lift the car up so we can get underneath the front bumper. There's a bunch of clips on the bottom. Uh, a couple bolts that are up underneath that hold the uh, inside of the bumper up underneath the headlight. There's two bolts under the headlight, I believe. Maybe one, I think, on each side. Uh, it's been a minute. I can't really recall off the top of my head. But anyway, there's definitely one on either side and behind the uh, wheel liner here. So you're going to have to pop these little plastic rivets out. There's one there, one there, one at the bottom to gain access. We're gonna do the same on the passenger side. We're if you guys have been following the channel, you know that we've already done hard pipe, the 1G blow off valve, which is right here. We're gonna keep this little section of pipe. We might have to use some of these 90s that we have, a couple of random parts floating around that we will probably end up keeping. Some of our T clamps and our couplers. We're gonna keep the uh, MAF sensor right where it's at. So I think we might just take it off from this point down. Or maybe we can just leave it all together and just drop out the uh, side mount here and wrap the pipe around front. I'm not sure yet, but you're definitely gonna need yourself a Sawzall with some metal blades. I got some uh, VHT high temp engine enamel just in case there's any parts that need to get colored black. Uh, I've got a file to clean up the edges of the pipe that we cut. It's a rounded edge file. It's flat on one side and there's a rounded edge on the other to clean out the burrs on the inside of the pipe so we don't end up having aluminum shavings fly through the engine. If you guys have been watching Rob Dom, he unfortunately had that happen with his billet four rotor, which was crazy. And they had to rebuild the whole darn thing because aluminum got sucked through on his two pass uh, front mount intercooler. So we're gonna avoid the, the shrapnel in the intercooler. And uh, a couple other things you're gonna need is obviously your drill. You're gonna need some hardware to mount your new front mount. There's a few things that you're gonna have to just have on hand, some sockets, some basic stuff, but as we get through it, I'll show you how to do it. Uh, it's been quite a while since I've done one of these. I remember the front bumper was a pain to get off on the last one that I did, but uh, we're gonna do ours now and hopefully get it nice and square on the front end here so this thing looks nice when it's driving down the road. And I do have a wire wheel and a drill for any rust that I may encounter. I'm just gonna cover it with any rust that I see. I'm gonna try to grind it down, try to hit it with that VHT so it's got something on it. And as long as it's in the engine bay, I'm fine with that. I don't want the outside color to change. And uh, yeah, anyway, let's get after this. We're gonna get her up in the air and I'll show you where the bolts are to take out again. If you have it while you're at it, you wanna grab your PB blaster and start hitting all these little nuts that are holding your bumper cover on. And this one also is going to retain the factory front bumper bar. And we do have an angle grinder in case you need to notch it out or anything, but I think we should be all right. So let's get after this. One other quick thing before we get this puppy up in the air. Pick up one of these uh, Easy Reach WD-40 cans with that nice bendable hose end on it. And under this front lip here, where these like to break off, these tens, you can actually sneak this right inside of the space and you can hit the uh, threaded portion of the bolt to help lubricate it on its way out. If you okay, can, now she's all up in the air. I got the wheels turned all the way to the left so I could uh, 
get in and access a couple things from underneath with my low profile jack. One thing you'll learn if you lower your DSM is you gotta get a low profile jack or else you can't get the damn thing up in the air. So we got her up. First thing I did was uh, started to crack a couple of these free. And of course we lost the one in the middle. The other two broke free fine. So next I'm gonna start pulling these out with a zip gun, a little impact. I'm gonna come over on each side, pop out all these little plastic clips so I can pull this wheel liner in. I'm gonna do that on both sides. got the uh, wheel liner pulled on this side with three clips so we can access a bolt that's up in here holding the bumper on. It's straight up ahead. You'll see it's pinching in between right there. I had two separate size clips. One's with Phillips head and one of these pop clips. What a pain in the ass. Okay guys, so we're over here on the driver's side. Something I figured I'd share with you. Uh, these two bolts that are right here that are holding the wheel liner in. There's one on the inside, one on the outside. These are gonna just break on you if you're in the Rust Belt in upstate New York or in Pennsylvania or anywhere where it snows and they've been hit with some salt or rust or whatever. They snapped. Well, the first one I took off, it broke. So I've got an easy out. I'm gonna try to pull that out. And where is it? this one right here also broke. This was the one that was holding the uh, bumper to the fender over here. You can actually see where are you? Uh, there she is. I don't know if you can see that or not. All right. Oh, there's a good amount of thread sticking out. Take my word for it. I don't know if you can tell or not. It's literally right in there, straight in front of my finger. So I'm gonna unscrew that. I'm gonna have to run to the hardware store and grab some uh, 10 mil bolts. I might have some left actually, but. That's this side. You also have to unscrew the bulb that's in the back here. It unscrews counterclockwise about, I don't know, a third a turn, and the bulb will be hanging dangling behind there. So this side, there's two more bolts on, underneath the headlight that have to come out on the frame rail on this side. So we're gonna go over to the passenger side and try to repeat the same process. I just used a 10 mil and a really long extension with a wobble head. So if you got a wobble head, now's the time. Down here, Underneath the car, oh, that's got to come out. That one is attaching the push bar in the front there. So we're going to take that out. There's those little plastic inserts that go inside of the bumper bar there. We have one on this side and I think one on the other, I want to say. So we're going to pull those out next. Looks like we should probably hit it with a good happy amount of WD-40 or blaster or something. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be breaking a lot of friggin bolts free and using the easy outs for quite a while here today there's actually two of these if you look straight up there's let's see if I can get you an angle here hey there we go we got one in the front and we got one in the back there it is all right sorry for the blurriness guys I'm on my back under the car it's just it is what it is all right, so I'm gonna spray these and I'm gonna gingerly crack these free with a All right guys, so this is turning out to be a little different than the last one that I did. Anyway, you come down in here and there's four more, two right here and two right here on the other side. Those little plastic push rivets, right? Then you come over to your driver's side or your passenger side and you have to pull the headlight out if this has never been done before. There is, well, I'll show you on the passenger side, it was easier. There's two bolts. There's one here and there's one here that come out. Then you have to take out the one right here, which is that one right there on the other side. And then in the bottom, there's a little tiny space that you can get in and get to that little bottom bolt. It's a 10 mil and obviously I just snap mine off. And most of the time people don't put those back in because it makes it such a pain to get your headlight out. So once you get that out of the way, 
you have two plastic rivets right here and the same on the driver's side and then your bumper cover should slip right off. Okay, so through the struggle, I was able to sneak a 10 mil on a wobble socket through and snap that off. So I got my headlight out carefully. There was the uh, two remaining plastic pins here. This piece comes out, we'll set it up here with the other one. This side has two of them in it as well. And I got that one out, put this piece up here as well. Put this in our little collection of pins. And that's it, that's gonna free our entire bumper cover up. Now the uh, fog lights are still wired in, but I'm gonna remove them for this. I'm gonna take everything except for those little bezels off. I'm gonna get rid of the broken lenses and the assemblies, and I'm just gonna leave the wires zip tied in there. So now I'm gonna pull this off, set it off to the side, and we're gonna start removing our stock side mount intercooler. All right guys, so we've gotten out the headlights, which I'm gonna to try to clean off one more time while they're out. We got this little uh, air dam that sits in front of the stock side mount intercooler there and kind of routes air to it. We pulled out our smoked fog lights. Those just have some 10 mils right against the frame and one plug that you take off and then they come right out of right here. They just sit in mounting holes. Well, you can see one and two broke and then there's number three. Of course, number three came out. But I'm just gonna zip tie these over here on the frame somewhere, cover the uh, electrical plug part with electrical tape or heat shrink or something to keep it from getting damaged because in the future I may throw some aftermarket fog lights in if I can find them. Uh, now we're gonna take and disconnect the uh, T-clamp that is back here holding this on and we're gonna get the hardware out of here. Looks like uh, probably 14 mil or something to take out the intercooler from this point and this point and we're gonna wiggle this puppy off of here and I believe this plastic cover has to come out so that we can slide our intercooler in between. I'm gonna have to take a couple looks at a couple of pictures and see where exactly people are sticking it. I don't know, I kinda, I kinda think I wanna just cut out the bumper brace with my angle grinder and make it fit in there and feed the piping right behind it and up and through behind where the uh, headlight is there. But we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. So gentlemen and ladies, if there are, it's not what the YouTube analytics says, it's all gents. But anyway, we got this thing all put, we got this thing all ripped apart. Uh, over here there's three mounting points for the side mount intercooler. They're all 12 mils, one, two, and three. This one's in backwards, it actually comes in from the other side. Or no, it comes in from the bottom right here. And I just threw a 12 in it, just because. Uh, this is the headlight pigtail, the turn signal pigtail, and all that fun. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is take this old oil, oh my good God. That's one, that's one oily girl. We're gonna rip this off so we can all right, so doing a little bit of brainstorming here on how I'm going to attach this to the front end of this car. So we'll see how this goes. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna start chipping away at this. I'll, I'll show you guys what well, I'm gonna do. Anyway, what I'm gonna do, I've devised a plan. Now that we've got this thing all pulled apart, I'm gonna come down here, take out the couple bolts holding this bumper support in. And this feels kind of like plastic. I'm not 100% sure if it is or not. I remember doing it on the 1Gs. It was a huge, thick piece of steel and I had to notch that out. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here on the bottom and I'm gonna cut out the shape of the intercooler so that it will rest right up in underneath and I can mount it to the top bolts. Now, or top bolts, I can put two holes up here and mount a couple of bullet bolts and washers going straight through it. Well, we're on a little bit of a rain delay. I did get the bottom of that plastic crash bar notched out just enough to hopefully fit in the front mount and the charge pipe going back. So we're gonna test fit it in a couple of minutes here once all this rain stops. All right guys, so after hacking out my bumper impact bar thing in the front there, forget the name of it, I've said it a thousand times today. <laughs> uh, this is pretty much what I've wound up with after taking a big chunk of it out. I gotta straighten it out obviously, it's just sitting on a jack stand, but. It lines back up, it fits in that hole perfectly. I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna mount this thing in there 
and start running my first set of pipe. Right, guys, so here's what I've notched out on the top. I put out a little part for that curve right there to kind of poke back through so I can run my piping down through and wherever I'm gonna end up putting it. Um, I did cut out the whole bottom of this all the way across. Hopefully you got a good shot of that. Uh, what I'm gonna use is some of the strap. I just bent it into a 90. I have two pieces, some extra bolts and hardware that I found. I found some uh, whoa, some Phillips head screws, big ones that slide right into the uh, same thread pitch as the uh, intercooler itself. So I'm gonna kind of mock everything up. I'm gonna use this as a mounting hole and same on the other side. That's gonna be a mounting hole for these bolts to go through. They fit perfectly. So I'm gonna drop a couple of those in. I got some lock washers and some flat washers. And I'm just gonna, just gonna try everything out and see what it looks like and see if I can get the bumper cover to slide back over it real fast. And I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, so I got it mounted pretty level with some strapping. And obviously I gotta get the bottom to go back some. So I think I'm gonna just cut out about two inches all the way around out of the whole opening there. It's pretty fat, so I'm gonna close the gap a little bit so this thing will sit back further where it's supposed to. And I don't know, I may try raising it up just a little bit more first, but obviously I'm gonna have to cut some out of it. So I'm gonna give it a whirl. I'm going to see where my up pipe is gonna land on top of the intercooler, where it's coming out over that way, and start modifying from there. Okay guys, so something I wanted to show you real fast. This is a, I believe it's a transmission cooler. Uh, it usually is on the front side out here. I actually was going to take off these bolts and realized that they were gonna break. So I got this one right here off very luckily. And there was one tack weld holding this piece on right here. And what I did, I'm sure this is a common modification. I took this bolt out and knocked that little uh, weld out and I flipped this pipe behind. So that gave me a bunch of room right here on the front to free up a lot of space with these oil lines or these cooler lines. You can put them behind the bracket instead of in front of them, which is kind of nice. The only thing is you got to make sure that they don't rub. So I'm going to coat this with some sort of rubber or something to make sure that nothing happens to it and they don't grind through. And then I'm going to secure them with a couple of really big daddy zip ties. That way they don't rub or grind or make any noise when driving down the road or pop a hole in themselves. Well guys, this is as far as I got today. It's starting to get dark out, starting to get crappy out. I'm going to probably leave that plastic piece off that's right there that holds the bottom of the intercooler, or holds the bottom of the bumper below the intercooler there. This little spot right here with some plastic push rivets. I think we're gonna leave that out. Um, so far, I've got this set to where the holes line up, up top and the hole on the side and the hole on the other side unfortunately this one right here and this one right here which had these two little metal tie down pieces in it are not going to fit in that point anymore because i mounted the intercooler bolts there but from the side it's still sagging quite a bit so i think we're pretty close to being able to bring this up yeah i see it wants to pop right back off again. Just catch this and slide you back on. All right. So yeah, we're pretty close. It looks like about an inch is gonna have to come off from right here. I'm gonna have to trim about that much from the back side here, maybe an inch and a half all the way around to get that to fit in there nice and perfectly. But I don't know guys, so far she's starting to look pretty beastly. Good morning everybody. We're back here working on this front mount intercooler system, day number two. And we got some sun out today. It's actually decent. No rain, thank God. So I'm gonna try to get this thing knocked out the rest of the way today, get everything put back together. But unfortunately it looks like we're gonna have to do some more modification to this front end to make everything fit. Now this uh, system directs both sides out the passenger side here and I have a plan for my charge pipe from the turbo to go right down to the bottom here but as far as the upper pipe that comes back across the top side here I gotta figure out how I want to route this I've been looking at it and I'd like to have it come back over here and follow back in through the stock location there where that little 90 degree is going up to the blow-off valve I'd like to follow that route if I can, but I'm gonna have to notch out 
part of the frame right there to get that pipe to fit correctly because I can't get it to follow across the top and then go down. I've tried moving the pipe around, tried putting different fittings on there. I don't know, I may have to, I may have to come over here and put an elbow in, but I also have to lay out all the pipes and see what's going on with what I have, see how many extra pieces I have, see what fits where, kind of get a good mocked up idea. I think the best way to go about it is gonna be mounting the charge pipe, the upper intercooler pipe from that 90 over there where the blow-off valve is, have it come straight down and around and meet the front mount, and then try to build a section going from the J pipe out and around the corner here to meet up with this uh, charge pipe from the turbo. So I'm gonna finagle around to this, mess around a little bit. Trial and error, obviously, and every car is gonna be a little bit different depending on what you wanna do for your own front mount install but so far I think I have the mount point pretty pretty much figured out what I figure I'm gonna do now I'm gonna bust out the welder I have a piece of steel plate and right down here in between we can see there's a bottom of that core support sitting right there and it ends up being pretty much flush with the bottom of that front mount when I slide it back that's where that other plastic guard used to be I think I'm gonna slide it back and build a little shelf for it or just weld a little shelf in place and uh, see how that goes. I'll, I'll mock it all up and see if it looks right. And if it looks right, we'll go with it. All right, so after running around for a few minutes here, we've got everything we need. We've got our cup of coffee, we've got our extra batteries charging. There's one right there. Uh, I've got the bumper off over here. I've got my Dremel kit with all the bits, and I've got my cutoff wheel, angle grinder, or not angle grinder, you know what I'm saying, cutoff wheel. I got the welder out, got the power ran. I think I'm gonna start mocking all this stuff up first. I'm gonna get the rest of the uh, sawzall and the saw blades out. Start looking around at where everything's gonna fit. So, what I've decided, I've got a piece of angle iron here. I think this is, what does it say? It is one by 36 eighth inch angle iron. And I've got another piece of eighth inch plate. And what I'm gonna do is I've marked this off. I'm gonna cut out four pieces that are four inches long. And I'm gonna make a, uh, I'm gonna butt two of them against each other to kind of drop down the bracket that I'm gonna make. And then I'm gonna weld this eighth inch steel plate. I'm gonna put one section on this side of the angle, one section on this side, and make like a little shelf to go across. So this can sit, because even when the pipes are attached, I don't want this damn thing doing what it's doing now. It's, it's rocking, and I know it'll be more solid once the pipes are hooked up. So we did our first welds of the year. Obviously they're not the prettiest. One side looks a little better than the other. I'm starting to get the hang of it on this one right here again. Uh, beads are still a little bit tall. I'm probably using too much wire speed. It's not really sucking in there as well as I'd like, but I don't think I'm gonna grind any of these. I'm just gonna hit them with a little bit of black paint. And let me grab some pliers, because they're still pretty warm. 
All right, so these are gonna go up underneath against the frame. And I'm gonna weld these two tabs on with this steel plate going across this bottom lip from, from one to the other. And that's gonna make us a little shelf. I think I'm gonna do it about probably 10 inches wide because there's that body mount point there that I gotta go around. Okay guys, so here's where we, where we have landed. That's what I'm looking at as far as uh, mounting points. That plate, I just tacked it onto the body and I'm sure you can probably see it right down there. It fits perfectly. This is exactly what I wanted. All right, so we are smoking just a little bit still. We got this bracket welded on, it's nice and solid. She ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna take and clean it off with the wire wheel on the end of my drill real fast. And then I have some rubber in a can. Where is it? Right here, rubber flex. And I'm gonna slap a coat of it across all of this stuff so it's nice and squishy and soft so it doesn't end up rubbing holes in anything. And I have to put a pad on the back side here to keep this from rubbing back and forth on the core support. And then we're gonna start notching out the section right here. So here's where we stand, the front end. We are brackets welded in, she's nice and solid. I just put a little uh, piece of cloth around the center here and zip tied my cooler lines so they don't wobble or rub and keep them back out of the way of the intercooler. And then on this side, I decided to notch out, carefully notch out, mind you, a portion of the front of the core support in the front end here, just this shape right here. Took it out, cleaned it all off real nice with my Dremel, and that's gonna be where my pipes are gonna go through and around. Okay, so this is what we've got. Our bracket is holding up the intercooler perfectly. I've got the uh, pipe that wraps back around attached, just slid over for right now. And then down this way, where my notch is, you can see that that pipe is perfectly fitting right there, except for that bottom corner of this part of the bumper here I'm gonna probably notch that out right there just that little edge to continue that that circle shape right here so this will fit through nice hey guys we've got a lot of uh, notching done down here I notched out this corner post for the pipe that comes across the top and goes down and out I flipped I had a uh, two and a half to two and a quarter exducer that I swapped to the J pipe going out this way and there she be. So now that's the uh, boost pipe that can go into the bottom of the intercooler. And then right there, I swapped out the two and a half to two and a half 90 degree elbow. Uh, and that's ready to go for the charge pipe up to the throttle body. So with some test fitting being done right now, uh, it looks like I'm gonna take off not nearly as much as I thought down here. I am gonna shave this bumper back about one inch all the way around the circumference of this opening on the inside of the bumper here. So this back lip, I'm gonna take about an inch out all the way around with my Dremel tool. <clears throat> Everything is fitting pretty well. I checked and saw there's one part where the intercooler is touching one of those transmission lines. I'm gonna put something back there to keep them from rubbing. This pipe is fitting perfectly through the notch that I made with my Dremel. I don't know, let's see if I can get a shot of it. There you go, now you can you guys, see it. I think I've got this thing locked in nice and tight I'm gonna tighten up the uh, hangers for the uh, side mounts of the intercooler where I've hooked up the straps they're just Phillips but 
I've got this pipe nice and tight. I'm going straight across. It goes straight through the frame, which I did fit a coupler in, and that's gonna keep it from blowing a hole in it. Down around the side here, ah, we routed from the bottom where the turbocharger hooks up. That comes straight through, runs right on into the bottom of the intercooler and out the top side. This pipe comes, goes straight up through the factory hole and up into the throttle body. So that is it. Now I just gotta throw the bumper back on. The only part I trimmed was right here. I flipped it upside down. I just made it flush with this metal right along here and that gave me just enough clearance. So I'm gonna cover up those transmission lines. I'm gonna tighten up a couple of brackets and then we are done. Hey there guys, we're back here. It's day three. Oh, this guy's getting into his truck with his whole ass out. That's beautiful. Uh, so anyway, it's day three. We finished all this stuff up last night and it ended up getting pretty dark out so I couldn't record a lot of it, unfortunately. And for that I apologize, but I do wanna show you guys where I landed, how everything came out. And uh, so far it all looks pretty damn good. If you look underneath though, there's a little bump Right, right about there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a uh, metal support in the bottom portion of the bumper. And I'm gonna have to take this front bumper cover off and do a little bit more trimming to help line up my fenders. The seam on the fenders, there's a little tiny gap right there. This passenger side is a little bit worse. Yeah, it's, it's gotta get tightened up. I didn't have access to a hardware store for a couple of bolts that I wanted to use. And yes, I know my fog lights, or my fog lights, my headlights look like they've been hit with a gallon of 2%. Uh, I'm gonna polish these bad boys off here too when I do the bumper cover adjustment. This is all uh, some trial and error fitment. And it was a big job to do this. It was a lot more work than hacking stuff apart and pulling parts off and bolting this thing on. It was literally cutting parts of the frame, notching things out, welding, but I mean, it all it all comes down to preference. You can do it whatever way you want to do it. And I personally think that it came out great. Everything is nice and centered. That little shelf that I built actually did a really good job of holding that thing square. And it's added support underneath in case I, uh, you know, catch a curb or something, or you know, something smacks underneath the bottom side. It's got a steel plate, so it's not just soft aluminum there. Well, I'm gonna pop the hood and show you guys the final run and. Let me know what you think. All right, so hood is open. We've got up to the throttle body, the existing section that I already had, and the uh, MAF translator plug is right there, and the GM plug, all that. Um, the stuff I kept, I didn't really have any issues with it, and I figured why change it? It was already there, less work for me to do. So the blow-off valve stayed in the same place. The only thing that I had to change was this vibrant two and a half to two and a half, 90 degree, was sitting with, uh, a rubber inducer down here at the bottom of the J-pipe and that's what sent the air out to the side mount intercooler, the stock one, and then this black one was up here because the stock side mount intercooler is 2.25 and then it came into 2.5 inch pipe. So I flipped those, everything hooked up perfectly. The only place that I had trouble was the piping down in here. It was actually from the turbo right there going around to the bottom of the intercooler. It was sticking out too far this way, so it ended up pushing the bumper out, and that made everything a little twisted, but I did lose a bolt here, and I lost a bolt here, but I'm gonna start easy outing all these things soon and putting all the little bolts back that I need to put back. I also have one missing from my time, upper timing cover that I gotta get out of the valve cover carefully. But yeah, everything is in, everything routed real nice. If you look straight down through here, that trans cooler is safe. Uh, there's a little bit of shavings everywhere. I gotta take this thing to the car wash. All the piping held, I took it around. I was boosting uh, 18 PSI right now, and everything held fine. It didn't blow any pipes off. And something that I did notice that I thought was kind of funny was right after I started this up and started driving it, the initial drive down the road, I had it plugged into my little uh, log tool to see what my fuel trims were. And through second gear, I was getting a stutter, and I think that the airflow increased, or something, or the efficiency of the airflow increased. It must be a cooler charge because it actually uh, 
was adding fuel through second gear and was causing a little hiccup so I had to pop open my math translator and uh, give it a little bit more fuel so the computer would stay right at zero the short term fuel trim it was a little a little bit of tinkering but so far I think that fixed the issue um, I don't know if you guys have seen it there's a, a big upgrade coming here really big one finally we have DSM link um, I'm waiting on the chip the cable and the CD to show up the uh, flash module and all that but I did get a socketed 2G ECU with DSM link V2 in it and I'm gonna pop that chip out put the flash module in and get rolling with DSM link here very soon and uh, we have a couple other pretty sweet upgrades that are gonna happen here in the near future but this is one of the big ones this was a hell of a job guys and if you want to follow what I did you can watch the video all the way through to the end you can see where I came into trouble what I had to chop out how I made it you know fit and everything fits fine right now aside from the bottom of the bumper and once you add this in strength is not a problem because this is butted right up to it so I mean it doesn't really move at all and that's pushing pretty hard on it even on my foot here I can't I can't get the bumper to wiggle at all it's nice and tight the only issue I have is with the fenders so I'm gonna trim just a little bit more out of the opening down here and hopefully everything lines up perfectly and yeah we're gonna fix these damn headlights because this is ridiculous I actually got uh, cleaner on them last night and I tried to wipe it off so yeah that didn't help anything they're so glazed over right now I'm gonna sand them off one more time I have a I have a kit for that so I don't know, we'll do it before and after that. Maybe I'll make a video out of it and show you guys how to fix these up. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like. Appreciate all you guys who've been following us on Instagram and staying with the channel. This was a hell of a build. It was fun. We got the job done. We're going to do some more upgrades as it goes. And this is just one more check on the list. So make sure you give it that thumbs up down below. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, keep your hands clean, guys. And we'll see you next time in today's project. Take care.